chapter two talks a lot about uh, the use of meter and how the hierarchy of the beats helps the music really dance. So could you elaborate a bit about this and tell us about these weird and wonderful articulations? The turd EDs. Yeah, that we've ne <laughs> we never see in modern flute playing. We don't. And it might, might be I, a shock to the modern player. When I was writing this book, I was trying to think very hard about all the things that I've learned over the years in, in, in my book playing mm. that can directly be done on a modern flute. And I think it's the biggest thing that will automatically make you feel as if you're getting the hang of the baroque music mm -hmm. because the dance style is so crucial a lot of time trying to play everything evenly with equal weight yeah, yeah. that's not necessary on in baroque music mm -hmm. because the distribution of the beats is unequal dancers always need to feel where their yeah, feet yeah, go yeah. down they also need to know when they've got to lift their feet uh -huh. um so if you're in a, a triple time which of course you know ticks all the minuet, the sour band, yeah. we've got a lot of triple time music. If you have your downbeat as your tur, and then you lift on the dip, which is the second beat, and then the third beat is a swing beat. I often write this, this U underneath, uh -huh. because it's your mm -hmm. upbeat. Yeah, yeah. And that doesn't need a dip, because it's a little bit too punctuated, mm -hmm. it needs more of a D. really useful thing to have that in an exercise. I know from trying to teach Baroque music that um, when you're dealing with issues like feminine endings and swum, you know, the idea of a dance meter, if the notes are moving around it's often really difficult, especially for kind of intermediate students, to, yes. to do the two things at the same time. So to take it out off the page and put it in an exercise is a really useful thing.